small eastern Kentucky community is wrapping its loving arms around families dealing with a tragedy. The state parole board decides to keep a convicted murderer in prison. The victim's father is talking to us about that decision. A big celebration for an eastern Kentucky native who left to pursue a dream and came back a star. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon to you. It is a tragedy that has shaken a small eastern Kentucky town. Three women, a toddler and an unborn baby, all died in a crash in Clay County on Friday night. They were from Hyden in Leslie County. Our Phil Pendleton shows us what the community is doing to help their, their families in our top story at 5. The local fire department has been out here all day collecting donations for the funerals for the victims of this crash. The local fire chief tells me that he went to church with them and he says he feels the tremendous loss that these families are going through. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Chief Bill Morgan took to the streets Monday. He, along with other heightened firefighters, are collecting money. Dollar here, some spare change there, whatever drivers can give. A little that may add up to a lot for families of three adults, a toddler, and an unborn baby killed in a head-on crash. I know it's unbearable for them, and they getting the community is supporting these families. It's unreal how they're supporting them. Smith says her cousin Tiffany had just been to a doctor in Lexington and was returning home when police say a truck driven by Jason Gibson collided head-on with the car. Gibson is the only one who survived. Five people have been lost in this accident, and that is a major tragedy. I'm told that Tiffany Williams Morgan was expecting her unborn son to be born any day now. Her other son, who died the result of the injuries in the crash, would have turned two on Christmas Eve. In Leslie County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The driver who police say caused the crash is still in the hospital, and he's listed in fair condition. A woman convicted of murder will spend another five years in prison before her next chance at parole. The state parole board deferred Karen Brown's parole request for a second time today. Brown and her former lover, Elizabeth Turpin, were convicted of killing Turpin's husband, Michael, in 1986. WKYT Sean Moody is at the live desk with reaction from Michael Turpin's father about the decision. Sean? Hey there, Amber. Michael Turpin's father, Don Turpin, said the decision today was bittersweet. The Turpin family has been fighting for Karen Brown to stay in prison for the rest of her life. Brown asked to be released on parole. The parole board made that same decision as last time, a five-year deferment. This was the second time Karen Brown has come up for parole since she was sentenced to life in prison back in 1986. She was eligible for parole after 25 years. Back in 2011, the board unanimously agreed that she would have to serve five more years for her murder conviction. She was one of three people convicted for Michael Turpin's stabbing death, including Turpin's wife. The Turpin family went to the parole board a week ago go. Several members of the family and their supporters asked the board to give Brown a serve out, meaning she would not be eligible for parole again. They said a life sentence should mean just that. Karen Brown told the board last Tuesday that she should be paroled because she was now living a new life based on giving instead of taking. Late this morning, the board announced their decision to make Brown serve five more years. Don Turpin said it's painful to go back to the parole board to plead their case every few years. When you do have to go down there and plead with them, it, it really really infuriates you. You know, you get very angry that uh, that this has to happen and uh, it just brings it all up over. Don Turpin said as long as the three people convicted in Michael Turpin's death are eligible for parole, they'll continue to show up at those hearings. At the live desk, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. Keith Bouchard will be eligible for parole in 2018 and Elizabeth Turpin, Michael Turpin's wife, will be eligible for parole in 2021. You can use a word starting with the letter W to describe Christmas this year, but it is not white. Not going to happen. WKYT's Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's here with a warmer and also a wetter than usual forecast. Yeah, warm and wet. The uh, key words of the weather week for Christmas week. Those temperatures may set records before all is said and done, and every day will at least feature the chance for some heavier rains and uh, all of it may add up to some local high water issues at some point over the next week. Here's the view right now for your Monday. We have a lot of low clouds, gusty winds, 
and also areas of drizzle and some heavier downpours. 54 degrees, winds are coming from the south at 13. We're getting gusts, though, greater than 20 to 25 miles per hour. Rain train southwest to northeast as of right now. Santa may want to come into town on a jet ski later this week, maybe a boat. How about that? Uh, temperatures across the entire area are in the 50s now with those heavier bursts of rain that are showing up. London, Corbin, and especially back to the west. Look at that round of heavy rain gearing up from Columbia just to the northwest of Jamestown, Russell Springs, right on into Liberty, Casey County, folks into Danville and Lincoln County, uh, Boyle County and Lincoln Counties. We're going to see those heavier downpours, and eventually that'll take aim at parts of central Kentucky again. All of that funneling up ahead of an area of low pressure that is to the west of Memphis, Tennessee. Here's what we're working Working on heavy rain, maybe some thunder and lightning, maybe too much rain, near record warm temperatures. Merry Christmas from the windy, wet, and warm weather center, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Police are questioning a woman accused of running her car onto a crowded sidewalk on the Las Vegas Strip. One person was killed, three dozen others injured. As Chris Martinez shows us, police say the driver crashed on purpose. The Las Vegas Strip is open and back to normal after a night of chaos. Police say surveillance videos show 24-year-old Lakeisha Holloway with a 3-year-old in her car plowing into crowds on the sidewalk. Video confirms that we believe it to be an intentional act. I do not believe it to be an act of terrorism. Emergency crews scramble to treat victims. 32-year-old Jessica Valenzuela from Arizona died in the crash. Dozens more were injured. We are going to start off by filing one count of murder uh, with the use of a deadly weapon. Witnesses say the car was going as fast as 30 to 40 miles per hour when it first plowed into pedestrians on this sidewalk. They say it later slammed into another crowd just down the street. It looked like she wasn't even trying to stop the car. She had both of her hands on the wheel and was looking straight forward. And she accelerated again and just kept mowing everyone down. Holloway sped away from the scene before parking at another hotel to alert a valet. And advised that uh, she had uh, ran over some individuals on Las Vegas Boulevard and uh, requested the valet parker to call 911. Police say the woman had recently moved to the area from Oregon and was living in her car. Officers are still investigating a possible motive. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Las Vegas. The toddler in that car with the woman was unharmed. Holloway remains in custody. Prosecutors say they plan to file additional charges as the investigation continues. A pastor who is also a school bus driver accused of sexual abuse is expected to be in court tomorrow. Our county by county coverage begins in Powell County. The sheriff's office says 52 year old Stephen Williams sexually abused two girls. He was arrested Friday and charged with sexual abuse. And deputies tell us so far no more victims have come forward. His court date could change if he posts bond before the hearing. It's set at $300,000. Voters in Grant County will decide tomorrow whether to allow full alcohol sales in that county. Right now, only five restaurants in the county serve alcohol. Right now, the law limits alcohol sales to restaurants seating at least 100 people, and that they have 70% of their receipts from food. A big welcome home today for Eastern Kentucky's Jordan Smith. The Harlan County native won The Voice last week. It began with a parade followed by a ceremony that got underway about an hour ago. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live for us in Harlan with more on the celebration. Hi, Hillary. Good evening, Amber. I can tell you this small town tucked in the mountains of eastern Kentucky is absolutely buzzing with excitement. The celebratory homecoming ceremony just wrapped up a few minutes ago. We heard from Congressman Hal Rogers, Secretary of State Allison Leonard and Grimes, as well as many other officials. Then Jordan Smith himself addressed his fans here and then closed out the program by singing Hallelujah. You can see as the crowd is emptying out here behind me, thousands came out today despite this cold rainy weather to welcome home and celebrate Jordan Smith. Team Jordan took over downtown Harlan lining the streets waiting to see the pride of their community America's choice for the voice Jordan Smith. This is so cool, you know, just to be here back home, get to celebrate with everyone and get to thank the people, honestly, that, that put me in this position, you know. I am the person I am because of where I'm from, and they voted and supported me. It's been so encouraging, so I'm really happy to be here and celebrate this win with them. It just makes goosebumps go all over me just to think that somebody from this little town in Harlan, Kentucky, went 
just so far. Very excited that he's not only a great singer that won The Voice, but that he stands for something so positive, which is very important for our kids. The Harlan County High School Band led the parade through the Team Jordan Line streets. The band Smith was a member of until he graduated in 2012. He is a wonderful person, not only talented, but just as nice and kind and humble as you as they come. Many who call Harlan home who now live away traveled back to join the crowds here to see the young man who they say has given the community a tremendous boost. So everybody think people that live in the mountains, they're not this and they're not that. And here we have a very educated person, very talented, and I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Giving his home joy, pride, and hope. The whole reason Smith says he competed on The Voice. That means so much to me. You know, that's one of the main reasons that I, I wanted to, to do something like this, was just to be able to come back and to show them, you know, there's hope and, that, and hopefully inspire everyone here. The fans I talked to out here say watching Jordan succeed on the national stage from back here in Harlan was something that was truly special. And they say they all felt like they were right there with him. They wanted to make sure he got the homecoming he deserves. And they certainly did that, giving him various honors and sentiments at today's ceremony, including being named a Kentucky Colonel, an honorary Harlan County coal miner, which is also an honor they gave to Jordan to pass on to his coach, Adam Levine. So certainly just a tremendous tremendous day here for this community. Now live in Harlan, Hillary Thornton, back to you. The Republican field for president got a little smaller today. In a video posted online, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham announced he is dropping out of the race. The latest CBS News analysis shows Graham polling highest in his home state, but even there, polls show him in eighth place. The Food and Drug Administration is lifting the nation's ban on blood donations from gay and bisexual men. There will still be major restrictions on who can donate, including one year of abstinence. The ban was put in place during the early AIDS crisis back in the 1980s. A judge has set a new trial date for one of six police officers charged in Freddie Gray's death. William Porter's first trial ended in a hung jury last week. Gray died from a spinal cord injury he suffered in police custody in April. Porter's new trial begins on June 13th, which is after the trials for the other officers charged in this case. A teen given probation in a drunk driving case that made national headlines is missing. 18-year-old Ethan Couch didn't show up for a meeting with his probation officer in Texas last week. He's known as the affluenza teen after his lawyer argued his wealthy parents coddled him into a sense of irresponsibility. Authorities are also looking for his mother who disappeared around the same time. A choir is bringing some great music and a little inspiration to the White House. President Obama invited the Atlanta Homeward Choir to perform tonight. Now, this isn't your typical choir. All 19 members are homeless. The choir began three years ago. Members say it helps them feel like they're part of society again. I feel myself change a lot, actually, because, you know, coming in from off the street, it's like this is a literary sanctuary. The Homeward Choir recently became a nonprofit organization, and their proceeds will go toward providing services for the homeless. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. It's a requirement in car seats, but one group wants flame retardants banned from the safety devices. Federal law mandates seats be made with fire retardant materials, many of which are linked to cancer, neurological disorders, and developmental delays. Scientist Arlene Bloom is the executive director of the Green Science Policy Institute. She says the chemicals in the foam can break down into dust, which children then inhale or ingest by putting their hands in their mouth. Flame retardants only protect against very small flames, and the flame retardants underneath the child, it's not going to make a difference. The Michigan based Ecology Center found that 75% of all car seats contained flame retardants that are potentially harmful. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the International Association of Firefighters are among the organizations lobbying to ban fire retardant chemicals from children's products. More Americans are using their cell phones to get online. A survey by the Pew Research Center found 67% of people have broadband at home, down from 70% in 2013. 13 15% now rely on their cell phones, up from 8% two years ago. In all, 80% of U.S. adults have Internet access. And using your cell phone can be a pain in your neck. The same can be said for your tablet, computer, or other gadgets. As Holly Furfer shows us, using them incorrectly or too much can lead to aches and pains. 
Pat Newby has traveled to 87 countries and seven continents, but a recent trip left her with a nagging neck pain. I thought the worst because the pain was that severe. The culprit? Her e reader. We're dubbing it smartphone finger. Um, some other problems are mouse tendinitis um, or sometimes just a tablet neck. And that's what Newbie had. She strained her neck and shoulder muscles from hours of looking down at an e reader in her lap. The remedy? Getting her body back into proper alignment, starting with sitting up straight. You want the top of your screen to be roughly at or just below eye level. Okay. okay. You want your shoulders relaxed. <laughs> okay. Elbows close to your body. That's wonderful. And you're already protecting your lower body because you want your thighs parallel to the floor. You want your hips, knees, and ankles at 90 degree ankle, uh, angles, and you want your feet flat on the floor. Taking frequent breaks can also help reduce injury. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer.